this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. I did hear that they were coming through necessary media. Because it's necessary. <laughs> necessary media. it's necessary yes yes ladies and gentlemen i am back again for episode number three this is necessary tv we're coming in live every wednesday 6 to 6 30 forever remember that because i need all of you to get your friends your family your uncles your cousins your grandmothers your great grandmothers your extended family your in-laws i don't care get them all on board we got a lot of things going on over here now i'm gonna tell you right now this show already started off with a little bit of a, a of a snafu to, to give a shout out to George Thompson. Keep it real. Um, yeah, we got a little bit of a, a sound issue, but I got my interns working on it. Everybody out there remembers Jake and Kelly, Team JK. Uh, so we got a couple things going on, but I just wanted to let everybody out there know that, again, as this show goes on, there's gonna be a couple things I'm adding. So like today, you're gonna see some things. And, and remember, go to the YouTube page, www.youtube.com slash the necessary media. To, if you miss the show, you want to catch up, you want to share it. There's going to be a lot of uh, extended scenes, if you will, a lot of edits in. So um, I'm going to have to test something quick. Oh, if my answers, hey Jake and Kelly, you out there? Jake, give me the. I got Jake over here. Jake, how's the how's the soundboard working, Jake? Can I get a head nod? A yes or a no? It, let's see. Let's test this out. If this works, let's see. Right now, I am. No, we, we don't have that. I don't know what's going on. All right, wait, see again, ladies and gentlemen, this is live TV, that's cool. Let's check this out one more time. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, we got sound there. Is there any way I can get a sound in here in turn? I'm not hearing nothing in here. Hey, it's all right, anyway, live TV. What are we gonna do? I'll, I'll make sure I edit this out for everybody. That's why I said make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll edit all this out. We'll make this nice and pretty. Let's check that one more time. Now is that coming up on live TV though? All right, so everybody out there, you're hearing it. That's good enough for me. So actually, I was supposed, I wanna say another thing. This Somebody might come in in the middle of this. If not, I'll give a shout out anyway. Monica Souza is supposed to be one of my guest commentators on the show. I'm gonna try int to introduce a couple of guest commentators as I go along, but um, so yeah, that's gonna be the show today with that. If she comes in, I'll just transition. No issues, no problems. We got a guest? Intern, can you get the door? I think we got a guest. Hey, no, no, I have no money. No, no. No, no, I don't, I don't think that was. That's our guest. There we go. We got Fall River City Councilor Steve Long. Steve, how are you, man? Good, Mike. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, as you know, last night was one of those rare form city council meetings. That wasn't one of the, the, the typical sit back and relax. You know, it, it got a little, it was a lot of ups and downs, hills and valleys on that one. Uh, one of them, the reason why I had you on, what I really wanted to get into was I thought you made a point that I didn't even know about. In, um, I thought it was just with the, the CDA situation, but I think it's something more specific. So exactly why I had you on, if you could elaborate on that. I know you made the point that, um, again, I'm gonna, I thought it was a CDA, but I believe it was, what was the initial CD? Community Development Block Grant? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Right. The, the Block Grant. From it's the under CDA. Right. right. So it's the community, community Development Block Grant. And the way they were putting out their information as far as advertising how they work is that they were saying that they they have a preference for four of a re, re, uh, residents. Is that how it was worded? Well, this has been one of my pet peeves. It's like when you get into this political um, correctness, that type of thing, um, we always put in to our ordinances and different rules and regulations that we write that Fall River 
residents have a preference and my it's always about the questions you ask so my question has always been well what's the definition of a Fall River resident yeah it depends on what your definition of is is mm. so <laughs> last night I asked Mike Dion uh, my predecessor at CDA um, this is something I've been pressing for for a while and I asked him what the definition of a Fall River resident was and when we come to homelessness the uh, definition of a residence is once you come to the city and put your head on a pillow for one night you are then considered a Fall River resident. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, and if I understood this correctly, in the actual the meeting, it was brought up that this also pertains to how uh, we treat the situation with the homeless in the city. Right. I guess this connects into the, the what is it, the, the laws that we have established or just the... Well, there's a couple of things that happen in Massachusetts. We have a right to housing. Um, one of the few states, Massachusetts, has a right to housing. So anybody who comes to the city and requests housing, we have to house them. So, and under that parameter, that then also equates to this one day situation where somebody could literally move into the city, which, what does that even mean? You just have a, a, a mailing address? Not even a mailing address. You so do, do you just spend, step if you spend the water? You spend the night in the shelter and uh, you are then considered a Fall River resident. Now, was this in place when you were there, since you said he's your predecessor? Was this already something there that you noticed or you didn't notice? Thought well, it, it is something that I've noticed, but it's been carried on and it still goes on today. It's, it's one of the things that, you know, I think that we've built a tremendous uh, service sector in the city of Fall River. I'm not criticizing that for one bit, but I was a little taken back the other day when we heard that story in Bonstable about a Bonstable selectman saying, you know, <laughs> with the, with <laughs> send them up yeah. to Fall River. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, I had uh, last week's show, if everybody missed it again, I mentioned before, go to the YouTube channel, you can check it out. I got, uh, this is episode number three, so we got two on there. And I had uh, City Council Rich Cavaceres on talking about that because I'm sure every councilor out there had an opinion on this, but he was just one of the ones I, that I had caught vocal. And uh, so we talked about that. And I mean, that is one of the most egregious things I have ever heard um, that they, they, they quoted as what? That they can't, they think Fall River was better suited as, as handling this problem. So let's just all ship them off to Fall River. Well, I think, you know, I think that's the initial reaction. Um, and people were saying, w why is this guy saying that? Right. I, the, the reason he said it, and it's just, it's my opinion. It's Do you know what his name was? Not really. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, si uh, uh, City Councilor X out in Bonstable. Congratulations. You played yourself. The issue is this. It's like, I, I want to congratulate him for stating the obvious. This has been happening for... 15 years. Well, that now you bring up a good side point, which, so I'm gonna say my my anger at him making the blatant, blatant statement is definitely, I, I still think it's it's insane to say it, but now you bring up a great point. If you wanna call it how it is, he's just being real for his constituents. Exactly, it, it, but he, it, it's a normal course of business. Within our service sector, okay, I know this for a fact, okay, they have a communication network. Okay, and it's a good network. I'm not criticizing the network, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we, knew, we do have to embrace what we have and move on from there. Many communities which grew um, uh, and, and prospered found themselves in a situation where they didn't have the services and they're in this way of trying to build these services. Right. Well, from City of Fall River, we have the services already in place. And it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, these people need services. It's a good thing. My thing, when you, if you go back into where I come from um, and we talk about pilot programs, that type of stuff, where that comes from is that we had an obligation to serve poor people and that type of stuff. We stepped up to that, we've done that, and I, I congratulate the service sector for doing what they do. They do a great job. But they can now, now not step away and say, well, we fulfilled our obligation. It's a community obligation. Right. And the next step to that obligation is to balance the community. We need to start to do more infrastructure. This is the CDBG program that I was talking about last night. Start to bring millennials here, start to do more market rate housing, that type of stuff, and do the other pieces to allow our city to become the great city that it once was. Um, that's where I come from. That's, mm -hmm. my, that's, where, that's my center right now. I understand what I would, I'm not saying that the service uh, um, entities that are in the city should shut down. No, I'm saying they should stay. 
okay? But they should step up, and they may not have a legal obligation, but they certainly have a moral obligation to now help the people who help them become what they are. Well, now to carry over to the other point though, as far as what we have and what we deal with here in Fall River is we've had um, a constant building to help these people. We focus so much on that, um, that we do have these programs and we're, we're now having debates over, you know, what we're gonna do with the, the Narcan situation. Uh, that's something that's going across the, the state and the nation as well. There's other states dealing with the same issue. Um, so we're constantly at this battle of, you know, how do we help the people who need help, but how do we help ourselves? So that's why I, I totally agree with what you said that, uh, until, you know, when you bring it up like that, that the, the city council from Bonstable is just looking up at literally his region, that's fine. Um, but now, like you just brought up building the, um, uh, it's not affordable housing, market rate housing. Market rate. How do you feel about the, um, the discussion out there that the market rate housing is really just code word that eventually it's all gonna do like it's done previous times before where this just trips and falls and turns into more section A, more lower rate housing, et cetera which then just welcomes in more busloads of people from places like Barnstable and whatever? Well, it's, it's, it, it, it's a difficult issue, uh, and, and you hit the nail right on the head. Um, so it's, it's not, we can't focus in one area. We have to focus on many areas. We see what's going on down on 79 with you know, some of the largest infrastructure uh, investment in the state going on down there. Um, uh, the 79 corridor is just, it's a tremendous, tremendous plan. Um, I think it's great. Uh, and we need to do all those pieces. We need to do market rate housing. We need to do more. Um, it, it's amazing to me that when I grew up in the city, there were, tr there were many theaters. There were many uh, um, um, bowling alleys, uh, all kinds of different activities that you could, you could do, um, younger people could do uh, in the city. And it's amazing to me that we don't have a theater, uh, a, a bona fide theater in the city of Fall River. Are you uh, one of those people who support the, the redevelopment of the... Um was the theater downtown? I forgot the name of it. The Durfee Theater? No, was it the Durfee Theater? Maybe. Well, the, it was the Durfee. There's a, there's a few. The one that I know there was the one that was downtown that people were trying to uh, to exemplify as something to bring up. Now, I just had an intern hand me a, a paper. I'm, I'm going to admit off the bat, I'm a little confused at what was going on, except that it's, it's the exact, it's the Mass Development Bond helps renovate New Bedford affordable market rate housing. Um, the Mass Development has issued a 7.2 million tax exempt bond on behalf of New Ver Verdeen LLC which will use bond proceeds to acquire and renovate Verdeen Gardens, 110 unit multifamily rental housing facility in New Bedford. Um, yeah, I mean. Mass Development's been around for a while. I'm not right. sure when they, when they, when they came. Th these types of programs from Mass Development are available. Um, there's an application process that goes through. And these are the things that we need to uh, take advantage of. And in many instances, there are developers out there that have taken advantage of it. Um, we just need to be very careful. Well, I know you're so, why again, one of the reasons why I had, I had you on to talk about this subject, we're gonna get into other subjects if, as time allots, because this is a half hour show. Again, I said before, <laughs> I, said before I came from a two hour show that had me go this much time to this much time. So I gotta do with what I can. But um, one of the things I know, uh, I guess if I were to categorize you as someone who is, uh, who highlights the fact that we've had, we have to rebrand um, or reformulate how we handle our, our infrastructure as far as uh, housing and everything, so in other words, I think you're someone who would be pretty much a watchdog on making sure we don't um, develop more and more of the, the lower rate housing, Section 8 housing, et cetera. I, that would put you in that category. I would, I would probably put that right over, right over his head somewhere <laughs> or under, right here. Yeah, right there. I'll brand it later You're on. Choking me? No, no, no. I'm going to put, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit it later. I'm going to put right under there, watchdog, Section 8 watchdog. Oh, my God. Just to make sure, because in other words, it's not, you know, it's not about not helping people, it's the fact that, and I think people have made, and everybody out there, if you don't know this by now, I've caught on numerous times, I've heard multiple people say this, that Fall River has already ex either met or exceed, I believe exceeded the exceeded. amount, that, that we're, the percentage we're supposed to have as a city in the state or whatever. So you have other cities who are below their, their margin, correct? Yes, <laughs> we're, oh, we're, exceeding, we're exceeding expectations when it comes to, to lower rate housing. So, I mean, it's something that we have to keep a, a, a vigilant eye on because it, we've already, we're helping, we're constantly helping people, and we're gonna continue to help people, but at some point, it's taken from your pocket, and now you look down and you have nothing. They took all your monies for everybody out there, you know, classic necessary radio, uh, radio fans. Um, so, all right, I mean, as far as that subject goes, I, I, you know, that's that. 
is, is there anything you'd want to add to that? To well, I mean, it's all tied in. When, when, we, the viewers know. when we talk about the community development block grant program, way back when, that came from the model cities, and, and as we, we went through it, that was a, uh, it was like, sort of like a pilot program um, to find out how, you, how to use federal, federal uh, grants. Mm -hmm. Well, after the model cities program went through, and I think it was back in, I'm going to say, probably around 85 or so, um, they came out with their model, a CDBG model, um, and that model uh, required every community to not exceed 15 percent in public service categories. But in our Model Cities program and prior to that, we were using 42 percent of, of, of our grants for public services. Um, had we not, had we taken the regular, because we were granted a waiver, one of the few in the nation, um, to allow us to do that, and that was the power of uh, the politicians we had at that time with Kennedy, Tip yeah, O'Neill, yeah. those guys. Um, had we not done that and stuck to the 15% rule, I did a few calculations over the last 40, Crunching 40, numbers? 40 years. Crunch it, some numbers. I'm not a number cruncher, <laughs> but we did it. Um, it would have meant a difference of $143 million. This is what you're talking about over the uh, 40 yep. years, right? $143 million <clears throat> would have been the difference that would have been in, invested in infrastructure, parks and playgrounds, sidewalks, streets, water, sewer. And when we took it and put it into public service, we took it at a, we, we got, uh, we took a hit for that. So our city would look totally different if those monies were invested into the infrastructure, sidewalk streets, playgrounds, those types of things. We did use some of it, and a lot of that was Kennedy Park, uh, Bicentennial Park, uh, the, the Healy Pool. There's a lot of things that we did um, that, were, that were great, they're still there today. Um, but the Community Bill Block Grant Program was envisioned as a bricks and mortar type program. Um, but we were granted a waiver, and we, we took that waiver, but we never moved, and that's what what bothered me is we never moved from the day we got granted that waiver to move to the best practices that they had put in place to bring that public service cap back to where it should have been, which is somewhere between 15 or 20 maybe, something like that, um, in the city of Fall River. It would have made a huge difference. So it, it, it definitely was, a, it was uh, um, utilized, you know, it, it basically built Health First. It's a great organization. They have a great facility. Um, and, and other uh, and, and other nonprofits. I, I don't criticize the nonprofits, but we need to move to the next step. We need to start to balance this community with market rate housing, with more theater arts, those types of things that are available within our city. So that if you you come here, you got some place to go rather than just go to a restaurant. Um, there really is no. I mean, we have a little theater. We have some s smaller well, we groups. We got plans on that that right. new theater coming, right? Right. Right, and I think I think those are all good. Those are all good, and they need support. How do you fare on the side of? Uh, I gotta watch the time, but um, another topic that I hear people mention is is how we we constantly we push the uh, the amenities, so many amenities of the um, uh, the waterfront area. Are you? How do you feel about uh, the difference, or where would you balance any kind of a difference between developing a tourism spot or you know a uh, work? area for lack of a better phrase right now an actual job hub around the waterfront there's multiple people have talked about what do you call it like the um the box um the words escapes me right now the uh, the freight mm -hmm. and whatnot um things like they have going on in new bedford and, and whatever where there's actual jobs and money being developed out of that right away for for people who live in the in the area in new bedford i'm talking about but over here we're constantly hearing and there's plans we, we keep hearing about the plans about developing more and more of the waterfront are you someone that's more for developing a tourist end of it or are you looking at it like you'd you'd like to see more job creation in that area i i think they go hand in hand i really do um when we look at you know people uh, you'd be amazed um take a ride up into the industrial park it's 95 percent full there's a that has been an absolute gem for us, and now we've landed uh, um, uh, Amazon. Amazon. We've landed Amazon. That should be a real big plus for us. Um, I, you know, I think we need to get away from. You know, I thought when uh, our new mayor, uh, Jaisal Kerr, was elected, you know, we were going to have a fresh start here. But you know, come out of this, you know, that. That we, came, we came out of the starting gate. We're no, still discussing the things that were no, done in the past. We're still talking trash. We're still talking windows. We're still <laughs> It's, it's did, <laughs> did you just catch that? 
I heard it. I believe I just heard a window fall. <laughs> no. I, I heard it. Please don't, don't, don't. But that was another thing. We, we, I want to get into that a little bit now. Well, I got to I got to manage my time, folks. This, right. is, this is a 30 minute show. But well, there was this huge discussion that went on. I'm not even going to get into right now the 22 windows, folks, because the 22 windows things I'm going to say right now without uh, Counselor Long having to get into this. But I'm going to say right now, I've mentioned before on the first show when I had a uh, Former City Council Mike Mayoza on, and we discussed how him and, and another constituents were pushing to reinvestigate this or just have the mayor look at it. And I mentioned over and over again, I had previously on, on Necessary Radio, I had Sean Kadim on, and I had a great interview with him where he, he lined this up as to how the, the chain of, of order works. And all of a sudden, he just went off at a city council meeting and decided to just lay it all out there for people, his view at least. You know, there's multiple sides to everything, but he put his view out there, so that was all that. But what I thought was crazy and interesting was we were uh, was when um, was the whole discussion about the window that fell and the safety that lines up about was it sixty windows or something? <laughs> Again, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I don't have hard hats available. I should equip them. That's all right. I got a hard head. That's true. <laughs> hey, look, I got mine strapped on. <laughs> hey. So, yeah, always, always got to keep a vigilant eye out in Fall River now because there's windows just dropping. You never know. But what I thought was, so I want to hear your, your impression on the whole safety factor of what's going on in the windows. But then what I also thought was very interesting was City Councilor Cliff Ponte when he mentioned about the, um, there was a window. I guess you might know this better than me. I've never noticed it. I haven't been, though, to a, uh, the chamber oh, in a while. It. That there's a window with, with a crack in it that goes through the whole thing and that it, it, when the wind blows, the thing moves. He had something to say. Yeah, it was... How do you feel about Wait, that crack in the window? Uh, whatever, what was crack it? is whack. Something. Um, well, what what got my ire, if you will, uh, last night was that there was uh, I, I don't remember the uh, exact figures, but it was somewhere around sixty-seven thousand dollars that's sitting in an account that's um, for the extraordinary extraordinary funding for or emergency funding um, <clears throat> that was left over from the. Uh, when they redid the overpass, uh, the underpass, yep. under, under the city hall. And that was basically expendable funds that didn't need city council approval that could be used to, to secure the building and, and, and work in the building. Um, and I'm sitting there saying, you know, we're having windows falling here, we'd, and it's taken eight weeks to order one. <laughs> and now we hear 66. Right? Yeah. Now we hear there's 66 other windows that are cracked. and Crack is whack. Crammed together in a study. And I'm, I'm just sitting I'm like, this, this is... Uh, it just amazes me that this discussion happened like four years ago, and all of a sudden it just dies. And well, I'm like, had, how does that happen? It, well, I mean, we had that one happen. window that fell. What's going to happen if all of a sudden, you know, out of nowhere, people wake up the next day and you got reporters out there and they're just like, well, you know, Monday, a window fell. Another one. Tuesday, a window fell. Another one. Wednesday. Another fell. one. Thursday. It, it's it's gonna get ridiculous at some point with well, these things. I assume if one falls, the others have got to be around that line. Whether it's from weather, humidity, uh, poor, you know, installation. Which no, wait, time out myself. Bring that back, Mark. Bring that back. So what was it? Forty years, right? Since these things have been forty years. You know, forty years, except for twenty-two, which I'm not gonna get into right now. We've already done that. We'll get into that in the future. But. Um, yeah, 40 years since these things have been touched. So, I mean, I, again, you got to walk around Fall River very, very vigilant and pay attention. Just look up because you never know what's going <laughs> to You never know what's going to happen in this city now in that area. How do you, you know what I've, I got to keep track. I got about five more minutes and in, in about two minutes I got to go into the fan favorite no flex zone in about two minutes, folks. But what I, um, how do you feel about the the government center as a whole because what i there's another part of a conversation i've been hearing and i guess there was i'm not going to give out any uh, personal info i got ears everywhere people um there was a conversation that had happened where um i guess some pretty official people in city government have even stated that there's no need to have these these meetings at government center that this building is is just it's it's uh was albatross we're dealing with an albatross here where this thing is just sucking money left and right. 40, 40 years since these windows have been touched. I believe there was a conversation about them not being cleaned in whatever amount of time, and they were power blasted the last time. And then when these questions are asked, you have Ken Pacheco, who's just like, you know, this. I'd love to do this, I'd love to do that, but we don't have the money, which is a fair point. Um, but I mean, we have to do so. 
it's either going to build up and we're going to deal with the repercussions later or we have to figure out a way to do something with it. Well, I just think, you know, it's, it's amazing that, to me, that we don't learn by hist from history. Um, we had the school department come looking to build a new high school. And, you know, I hope I'm still on this council when they do that because in that budget, they need to put in maintenance money. Now, we're talking to speak about Kenny Pacheco, who I, uh, I respect enormously. Um, I think he's done some great work for the city of Fall River. Can he be criticized? Nobody's perfect. Sure, I understand. You're a liar. Um, but I think he does some great work. But what we You're a liar. Beat, you know. Um, it, You're a liar. We build these beautiful buildings, and then we don't maintain them. And I just, I, I find that to be just absolutely absurd. I don't understand how we can't budget for money to maintain. We're going to build these buildings, and we're not going to be able to maintain them. Um, we got chillers breaking down at the high school, and it, it's just <laughs> it's a sad state of affairs. Um, <laughs> I got you. Geez. I got you. I got a, I got a bubble around me. Save, save in the hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's but good. Uh, you know, I just I, I, I like to move more in a positive direction. I think the building's safe at this point. Um, you know, I, do the windows need work? Yes. Um, what about that crack? The crack is whack. We were, as soon as we came out, we were looking at it. I'm like, well, it's just ugly. It's just. And I heard though, but then they're just gonna board it up. Oh, it's a stress fracture. It's like, yeah, okay, it's whatever. Stress factor, stress factor. No big deal, folks. Yeah, Nothing whatever. to see here. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's just, it, it, it's troubling. Um, All right, well, that. I mean, uh, Steve, I gotta go. I'm then about to go into the, the fan favorite, no flex zone award. But wait, before we do, before we do. Am I, am I up for that award? <laughs> no, no, actually, you'll probably agree with this one. You know what, let's go into it. Let's go right into it. Let's go into the fan favorite, no flex zone award of the week. Hey. No flex zone. Hey. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you are in the no flex zone. The no flex zone is a zone where you do not belong flexing. And by flexing, I mean doing anything. You are not supposed to be doing it in a place you're not supposed to be doing it. And this week, the no flex zone award goes to <laughs> springtime snow. <laughs> springtime snow. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about. Now, I could have gave this award out. There's probably people out there for some reason that want to give it to the mayor and the administration. I think they're out of their minds because when there was uh, no snow, they were mad. When there's so much snow, there's mad. no matter what, people are going to be mad. And, you know, nobody's perfect. It's fine. I'm actually going to, you know, I'm going to take the objective side and say, has anyone who was paying attention to the weather realized that the I got messed up by this? I dropped my kid off at school that morning after WrestleMania Sunday, folks. I don't know how many people out there did that, but WrestleMania Sunday was me. But we had snow that was like this little bit falling down and then it, all of a sudden boom it blew up to this enormous hassle to deal with so again ladies and gentlemen this week's no flex zone award goes to snow that, that's no the, the, this snow yes that's snow so a um that's pretty much going to start to wrap the show up um Steve, first off, I just want to say thanks, and just to let you know, if you didn't know, this is probably the biggest interview you ever had. Probably. Probably. And probably this right here is most views you ever had on this camera. Probably. 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 I don't know. So, hey, wait, no, listen, Steve, <laughs> I want to, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you coming on, and I want to say thank you very much, and hopefully we'll be able to do Mike, it again you great Mike, I want to, I want to, I want to uh, wish you the uh, best in this. Um, thank you. There's room for everybody in this, in this city, and uh, yes. you're welcome to, you're welcome to stay. We're not going to throw you out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, <laughs> that's going to be the show. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. We can have fun. See, that's what I like. I like a good sport. Uh, I'm a good sport. I can take care of it. Not a big deal. A lot of I take my shots. I need to throw you no punches. Donald Trump said Fall River has become a dumping ground for everybody else's problems. He did not say Fall River first. Listen, I, this is why I, I, I admit this is a sound bite. I admit this is a sound bite, but this sound bite was only edited a space where he took a long breath. I don't know if he's out of shape. There's a long breath in between. That's the only part I edited. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that was part of the discussion we had before with you, uh, you actually running. Yeah.